to be a time when referring to a game as being cinematic was not a bad thing. That was around the beginning of the 90s. He had games like Prince of Persia pioneering the cinematic platformer, and then you had Wing Commander. At its essence, this is a space combat game. I would not presume to call it a simulator on account of it being made with technology that cannot do 3D graphics, let alone simulate physics, but it did try its darndest to seem believable and cinematic. And it did it in a way that pretty much changed this genre. If you're a fan of X-Wing, if you're a fan of TIE Fighter, if you're a fan of pretty much any kind of narrative-driven, single-player, combat-focused games with dogfighting, they don't even have to be space-based. The way we have those games today, or at least the way we had them when they were still being made, is because of Wing Commander, because of the way it was built. With all the jazz, all the fluff, all the glitz and glamour of a Hollywood movie. The gut kind, I mean, not, not the awful kind. Wing Commander began life a long, long time ago, and it was the creation of a man named Chris Roberts. He had been making games since he was in high school, and in the mid-80s he was working for a little company called Origin Systems. You may know it as the company that made Ultima and some of the best games ever made. There he created such titles as Times of Lore and Bad Blood. And then there came an idea. You know what's really cool? That bit in Star Wars with the War in the Stars and Top Gun. And these two ideas were merged together in a proposal for a game called Squadron. A game where the human empire would be expanding through the stars only to encounter the Hilrathi. All out war ensued, with humanity being driven into combat, though some say not necessarily out of self-defense. It was, after all, an empire and you would be one of its pilots, in a squadron of other pilots on a ship called the Tiger's Claw, patrolling through space, pushing back the enemy and in the end, defeating the Kilrathi. But was it truly justified? Well, yes, when the game was transitioned towards Wing Commander, the bits about your faction, the humans having kind of a moral ambiguity, were dropped in favor of a more black and white approach with you being good and them being evil. This was, however, revised later on in the series, so it wasn't a complete loss. Wing Commander was released in the year 1990, 27 years and two weeks ago. When it was released, it blew the socks off everyone. Hell, before it was released, they launched a demo, an unplayable demo, that just showcased what the game was capable of. That alone blew everybody's socks off. Everybody that could run it. Uh, you see, at that time, Origin uh, developed a reputation of Hey, you wanna play our games? Okay, get a new computer. Though to be fair, this wasn't what we see today with uh, Oh, our game doesn't run well, get a new graphics card, we won't optimize it. It was actually due to the fact that the game was sort of pushing the boundaries of hardware. That's what Origin did, it created worlds. Worlds that could not be contained in a simple 286, usually. In a world they did create with Wing Commander. There is such a thing as devotion to your theme, to your world, to your concept, and this game sold it perfectly. In the box, when you got it, you'd find materials that were meant not for you as the player, but for you as a pilot. You'd find a magazine that was made to be something pulled out of the game's world where you'd find details about your ships, about the enemy, about the history of this world. It was meant to bring you in, to hook you, to get you and contrary to some other uh, games of time, that did not stop once you got into the game. I mean, this wasn't a situation like with Wasteland where you would be constantly going back to the manual because that's where all the text was. No. Once you got inside, you had a spectacle. Going back to the idea of cinematic, it just blew everybody's socks off. Started off with that orchestral music. <laughs> 
orchestra because there was one in the image, but everything was thoroughly MIDI and composed by George Sanger, aka the Fat Man, who made the music for a lot of games back then. He'd be greeted with an intro cinematic with with cutscenes, with animated portions of the game that looked just amazing for the time. When people would be running towards the flight deck when you were loaded onto your ship and you were taking off, it looked breathtaking. It completely distracted you from the fact that you were playing a character with deep blue hair. There was a, a thing back in the day where pretty much every character with black hair didn't actually have black hair, it was a bit shaded towards blue. Perhaps it is because they wanted to separate the head of the character from the background, which may at times be black. Or Blair just had different kind of hairstyles back then and uh, Mark Hamill didn't want to come into the hole. I'm gonna dye my hair blue, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. The presentation really made this game shine, not just the fact that it looked good, but it felt good. You wouldn't just have a succession of missions with just a mini screen between them. You'd have the Tiger's Claw, which was kind of composed out of two or three screens, plus some other ones that showed up only in cutscenes, but you had the ship. You had the feeling that it was lived in. When you would save your game, you wouldn't just click on a menu, you would click on a bunk bed, and after you save, there would be a pilot there sleeping. And when you loaded a save game, you'd click on the pilots. You would even have a bar with an arcade machine, which was a simulator of the ships you would be flying in the game, and you would have uh, missions in it with wave after wave of enemies, and you would try to beat the high score of the other pilots. You had the other pilots sometimes sitting at a table talking, giving you advice about things, you know, setting up these characters, this world. You'd have a bartender to give you more information about the characters. It felt like there was more to this than just the shooty stuff. It had character, it had story, it had feeling and superb music, amazing music. And again, when the mission started, when you were in the briefing room and you were seeing all the things on the screen and you would get close-ups of the other characters and then you would see everybody run to their positions and take off, that was something at a level of quality that you did not often see in games up until then. And the missions themselves, the gameplay for that time was good enough. It wasn't complicated, they did have to call in before you tried to land the ship. If you didn't, you just repeatedly bump into the tiger's claw and then exploded. Flying through asteroid and minefields also got a bit boring after a while and you'd always be tempted to press the afterburner button and just sweep through those as fast as you could and blow up. And when you blew up, you weren't just mad with a game over a screen, no, you, you'd see your character trying to cover his face when the ship exploded and then you'd see your own funeral with an armed salute with your captain giving a eulogy. And it didn't say game over, it said the end and the music would still play. It was beautiful. This was the best possible influence Hollywood could have had on games in terms of style. Because Hollywood did have other influences on games later on. One of them was actually not that far removed from uh, the time when Wing Commander was launched. And it involved buying up all the shelf space and driving people out of business. But that's a story for another time. Sure, you may pass this off as just being glitz and glamour, but there was an absolutely mental attention to detail in this game. When you moved your ship, you'd see your character's hand moving on the stick. Originally, you were supposed to see the uh, the back of the character as well, like more than just the, the hands. You would see them actually move a bit when encountering uh, damage or something but that was a bit out of the scope of the final game. Now I'm not saying that Wing Commander is an absolute must play because it had a superb story, amazing characters and so on. It, it was kind of shallow when you broke it down to its bare essentials in terms of characters, story and so on. This wasn't an RPG, this wasn't meant to give you endless dialogue with these characters. It was meant to establish them, to make them feel like more than just a name that's attached to the ship that's flying beside yours when you're in combat. They'd have personalities. The enemies also had their own personalities. You would hear how some of their ships are built in such a way that they always break a formation in one direction. You'll also get uh, the occasional video message from the Kilrathi with some form of cat specific threat. They were giant cats, that was their whole idea. In terms of gameplay, like I said, the missions were fine. Control wise, it, it may be a bit difficult to play today on a kind of uh, 
uh, you may not be adjusted to aiming with a keyboard in a vaguely 3D space and the mouse aiming is kind of funky. You can probably try and do it with a joystick. Mine did not work that well last time so I did not bother with it this time. It feels kind of choppy being essentially run at uh, between 10 and 15 frames a second as was the uh, norm back then. And you don't have complicated things like rewriting power to other systems. You have shields, you do have uh, internal components that can be damaged, you do have a sense that this is thoroughly thought out, that you're not just flying a brick in space, you're flying a ship with actual components. It looked detailed enough to give you the impression it was more than just what you were doing. And it worked. It absolutely worked. It sold the idea of this kind of game. It spearheaded not only this genre, but it made other games desperately try and keep up with it in terms of presentation, in terms of quality. This was the star citizen of its time. Though no, actually that's a lie. Wing Commander 3 was the star citizen of its time. And you'd better be sure that it had more than three games. This series was gigantic. This was a property the likes of which we've honestly not seen in video games in... Well, actually, the only one that comes close is Warcraft. And that only in terms of its reach, because in terms of number of games, this one beat it cold. Sure, Warcraft has the NMO, which Wing Commander sadly did not get to have. Oh, one was in development, but EA sort of said no, so it became Star Wars Galaxies. That's no joke, that's actually how that game was developed as a Wing Commander MMO. It had four main games, it had the Privateer series, it had Armada, Academy, there was a TV cartoon about Wing Commander. There was an actual movie made based on Wing Commander 1, I think. The movie was uh, not Chris Roberts' best work. You sort of got the feeling that the movie didn't have as big of a budget as the games did, on account of it didn't star Mark Hamill like the games did, but it starred Freddie Prince Jr., which... The movie is not super great, especially since the, uh, the Kilrathi look like they were shaved by someone. Also, there were bits cut from it and, well, it wasn't that great. That's the basic idea of it. And there was supposed to be one last game in the series, well, more of a rebirth, I mean, apart from the MMO. It was supposed to be a um, sort of like big-ish game where you'd have a sort of persistent universe, also a single player campaign. Uh, it got about as far as a pitch video being created for it. Electronic Arts again said no, even though that trailer was made to look uh, pretty much exactly like Wing Commander would have looked like in the future, I mean with modern technology. Even the ships had that greenish tint to them, the horns especially. You may know that trailer as uh, Star Citizen, because that, that, that's what it was. EA said no, and everybody that ever liked this series paid a hundred and something million dollars so the ID wouldn't die. Eh, it's probably gonna be another two years before we actually see the final version of the uh, MMO part, I mean the single player one's probably gonna be available next year I hope. And by then, who knows, maybe Electronic Arts will get its head out of its, you know what, and say to itself, perhaps we should do something with Wing Commander, you know, that franchise that in the 90s was the biggest thing possible and that we drove into the ground like we do with everything. If you don't play the original Wing Commander, you can find it right now on GOG for the price of 5 euros and 10 cents and it also includes part 2 of Captain Blue Hair's story, Wing Commander 2. If you want to own all 9 games in the series, yes, that's right, 9 games, you can find them all on GOG for the price of 26 and a half euros. Why 9 games, you may ask? Well, it's because after Wing Commander 3, which was sort of a milestone game in the industry, because it was the game with the biggest budget of the time, Electronic Arts said, cool, make one every year. And that's how it died. Also, that's how, for a while, the concept of a cockpit for a space fighting game sort of went away, because they didn't have time to actually make cockpits for Wing Commander 4, 
and when everybody saw that they said well they're not doing it we're not gonna do it and they didn't and it was sad and for the channel it continued to be sad for many many years but now things are getting better i mean things are better things are amazing now they're superb and all because 27 years ago someone looked at a state in which video games were in and said we can make it bigger we can make it better we can make it look amazing and it'll have giant cats in it and nobody's gonna think that's weird no i still have no clue why they're cats could have picked anything though yeah lizards would be kind of overplayed insects do dogs they could have been dogs they don't sort of get the same feel from dogs cats you know are basically assholes so it would make sense they would have a space faring empire that just started shooting people yeah i think i get it now. i think i do goodbye